Hey everybody, we're back with the Vortex Edge podcast. Jimmy here on the mic, and I'm joined by instructor Corey, Mr. Corey Eliason. And Corey's here, so you know, or at least you're going to start to realize that that means we're probably talking about something that a lot of long-range folks like to talk about. Him and Justin are definitely, are definitely uh, not one-trick ponies, but they definitely have their preferences. <laughs> so, Corey, we're going to talk about MOA versus MRAD, and this is... Boy, I tell you what, for a new shooter, it's really weird when you start getting into looking at rifle scopes for your rifle, maybe something that's going to have tall turrets, maybe a more comprehensive reticle. You finally figure out the scope that you want, and suddenly you see the same scope, same specs, same everything, except one's in this thing called MOA and one's in this thing called MRAD. And now you're also going to be expected when you're on the range to be using these forms of measurement, which we'll get into shortly in order to dial at distance, hold over, do all kinds of really interesting things. And I think there's some people out there on the forums who will tell you one's better than the other. There's some people who will tell you it literally is a toss-up, doesn't matter. Um, boy, all kinds of stuff. And I'm sure you're going to tell us all about it. So yeah. real quick, though, baseline. What is MOA and MRAP? So just uh, generally speaking, uh, MOA, minute of angle, and mil. Uh, milliradian are just units of measure. That's all they are. Uh, they're used uh, in our optics. So our optics are manufactured either in minute of angle or milliradian. Uh, and we have a choice to either select one or the other. Uh, and basically, just on the surface, it's just, uh, I, was, I would associate it like inches versus centimeters type of thing. So they're just different angular units of measure, uh, much like an inch or a centimeter, uh, only uh, they get uh, bigger over distance. So as it it means one thing at 100 yards, uh, and then it means a different value at 200 yards and 300 yards. A different uh, linear uh, value at those distances as they linear, go. Linear, right? yes. And, uh, you know, just on the surface, uh, one minute of angle at 100 yards is 1.047 inches, uh, and one milliradian, one full milliradian, uh, is 3.6 inches at 100 yards. Uh, just generally speaking, and we use these measurements to uh, make adjustments in our optics so that we can hit our target, right? So uh, we, we adjust our point of aim, point of impact, so that everything's lined up uh, and everything looks good. Uh, and for us long-range shooters, it becomes more important uh, when we're trying to hit those uh, targets at distance. Yeah. It always helped me when I started looking at myself as a, a rifleman as basically being a miniaturized handheld artillery guy, you know, and you watch all the old movies and when you see somebody who shoots a cannon and they want to shoot it a little bit further, they're big cranking <laughs> on the big wheel and they're making the cannon go up further and further. And what we're doing with our scope in making those little adjustments, because the scope is affixed to the rifle and the rifle and its barrel and all that are in fixed positions, we're basically just moving the reticle around inside to force ourselves to move the rifle in order to put that reticle back on a target at a given distance or something like that, and uh, hopefully then it has the right you know trajectory and curve and all that stuff to end up hitting the target. Right. Uh, but yeah, we make those adjustments, like you said, in MOA and MRAD. And it seems like when people start trying to like squish MOA and MRAD into the linear units of measure, you know, because you're saying like one MOA at 100 yards is kind of like an inch it's a little bit over an inch that's where they seem to get a little lost it, it it seems a bit like there's all this math now that i need to learn because i'm a long range shooter but is there really all that math that you have to learn do you really have to think about all those conversions and things right uh so there's definitely a way to learn this through the math uh it can be complicated if somebody were to do that um I think it's important to understand that to a degree, but not completely necessary uh, at all, especially now because we have optics that are manufactured with a reticle uh, either in, in minute of angle or mil, and then we also have spotting scopes that are manufactured with reticles uh, either in minute of angle or mil as well. Um, so we don't necessarily have to think about corrections in inches anymore. We can just do it in the, the angular unit of measure that we use, and it's much easier for a shooter to do that to think or to line up their correction on target, uh, measure it out in their reticle and say, oh, that's 
you know, uh, one mil right. I just need to come one mil left in order to hit my target. Yeah. Uh, and I don't have to make any weird conversions. I don't have to say, oh, that's about 36 inches. What is that in minute of angle at 700 yards and, and <laughs> do all of this reverse stuff to try to figure it out. And it, it makes everybody's head spin if you try to think about things that way. So it I think does. just simplifying things like that for a newer shooter and trying to think about forcing yourself to think about things. Uh, in that way uh, would help a lot. It is cool because if you, you know, figure out basically the trigonometry of it and you use triangulation or whatever it is you want to call it, you can figure out a lot of stuff using MOA and MRAD that is also in linear units of measure instead. Because you can deduce, roughly speaking, maybe the range of a target based on something you've measured off of your reticle. You can maybe even deduce the size of a target approximately based on things you've figured out in your reticle. Usually if you, there's kind of like seems like if you know two pieces of information, you can usually figure out a third. Yep. And uh, so there is some neat things that you can do there. But it seems like, for the most part, to just have somebody get shooting, get dialing, hitting targets at distance, if they just kind of forget about all those conversions and things, they can still shoot very accurately and have a good time out there and do what they need to do. If they just think in either MOA, if their scope is MOA, or think in MRAD if their scope is in MRAD. Right, and we see this too with the long range classes too, because we're not out there on the line doing a bunch of revert like math and stuff. <laughs> oh, that's ten inches. What is that at five hundred? You know, we're looking at it through the the optics, having them look at it through the optics, measure out those corrections, apply those corrections to their turret if that's the way we're doing it, or making those holds uh, and trying to engage those targets. Uh, and I think when somebody does that, when they're actually there, you know, uh, doing the act of going through that process. Uh, things tend to click a little bit better. It's a little more difficult if you're, you know, just reading through an article online, trying to figure things out that way mm -hmm. uh, versus, you know, being there in person and, and going through the act of, of using those angular units of measure, dialing it on your turret, using holds in your reticle. It all really uh, gets tied in for people at that point, I feel like. It does. It does. And then I, a lot of people just love starting to throw pie in there, yeah. and I'm like, man, I'm out. As soon as you, <laughs> yeah, as soon as you mention uh, pie, it's yeah. just not not cool. But um, how about okay? So practically speaking, what for a newer shooter? They're looking at a scope. Like, is there one versus the other that they should get? And then let's say they choose one of those. Like, what is interacting it with it going to look like versus had they gone the other route? Does it really matter? What are your thoughts right. on that? So I've thought about this a little bit and, you know, just on the surface, I don't have a great argument for choosing minute of angle over milliradian or milliradian over minute of angle. Uh, but I do think that uh, on the surface, uh, if you're a hunter or a recreational shooter, uh, you know, just kind of, you know, getting into the sport as a hobby, um, maybe consider, do you have friends that are shooters or trying to get into long range shooting? Uh, or things like that that are already shooting? If so, uh, what type of units are they using? Uh, are they shooting in minute of angle or are they shooting in mil? Uh, because it's very useful to have shoot with somebody that's using the same unit as you instead of if you're in minute of angle and I'm in mil, we're over here doing a bunch of conversions. Then the conversions to, come Yeah, out. and then we, we want to stay away from math. So uh, that's kind of the name of it, the game there. It becomes a but, bit like a language. Yeah, it definitely does, and it helps to use a common language. Yeah. So uh, definitely if you have friends that are in the sport and are using a certain um, unit of measure, uh, consider that one strongly because it helps to have that common uh, language. Uh, I would also say that if you're looking to get into competition, um, the majority of those shooters uh, do use milliradian. Uh, so I would, uh, just based on that alone, I would place strong emphasis in that area if that's something that a newer shooter is looking to do. Yeah. Uh, just because they will have that common language with the people they compete with. Uh, they'll hear things. They'll be able to associate better uh, what's going on versus, you know, hearing a bunch of stuff. They're talking about mill mills and then i'm i'm over here in a minute of angle and i'm i'm trying to figure out what that means to me yeah um and because even though you can do conversions sometimes when you're in a competition i went to a prs match and you know granted i i was in a, a group of people they knew it was one of my first prs matches they weren't being super competitive you know or anything like that and usually people are pretty friendly but somebody would come off a stage and I'm on deck ready to go. And the guy's like, dude, I was holding like one mil left. That was way too much. I'd have gone right. like half. Yeah. And I can't all of a sudden be like, uh, convert, convert, convert. Yeah. If I'm shooting MOA, I can <laughs> yeah. just be like, got it. That's a good mental note. Boom, I'm up. I can just think about that 
and my reticle matches and all that stuff. It's it's pretty easy. Right, especially in a competition setting because the, the formula to convert it is simple enough, but that's not something you want to do last minute when you're <laughs> probably a little stressed because you have to uh, shoot your stage and all these other things are going on and you're thinking about the wind. So definitely yeah. keeping it simple in that aspect is, is a good idea. Right. So. right. Um, what do you tend to shoot? Um, so I was trained on Milleradian in the military and then I've, I've tended to shoot that, uh, from there on forward. I, and I think I just had bias because I was trained in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but then now I compete. So, you know, I'm fortunate that I do shoot mills and I know mills very well. Uh, I, in my past, uh, work life, uh, past jobs, I've used both mill and minute of angle. Mm. Uh, and it's not, and I guess just with that alone, that information alone, there's really no difference. It's an angular unit of measure. You just have to learn uh, what it means, what those values mean for whatever whatever it is you're trying to do at whatever distance it is. Um, yeah. So in the learning curve, you know, from one to the other, I, w- I would say it's not steep at all. It's, it's fairly simple. Yeah. Yeah, I know some people will say that learning mills is a little easier, perhaps, if you're just starting out from scratch. And I'd be curious to get your thoughts on it. And they say it... it really for the reason that it's it's a 0.1 system mm-hmm. rather than MOA, which is frequently talked about in fractional terms, you know, like yep. quarter MOA, eighth MOA, half MOA, and then you're having common denominators if you're adding them and it gets a little complicated maybe. Yeah, yeah, that could get a little dicey too. Uh, me personally, I don't like the whole fractions and things like that. I like the 10 base system yeah. where it's, you know, 0.1 or 0.2. And it goes up to one, and then it's 1.1, 1. 1, 1. 1.2, and and so on. Versus, you know, I'm talking two and a half, two and three quarters, or whatever it is. <laughs> I think my mind just like works better with that that ten right. base system. Um, and then with that as well, there's also windage formulas that are out there that work that are better suited for mills that are designed for mills. Really. And if you want to take advantage of those, uh, you would have to do the conversion if you're shooting in minutes in order to do that. Versus a mill shooter could just uh, walk through the steps of the formula and all the information they need is right there. They can just build up their table. I'm uh, curious about that. Yeah, I was just yeah. going to say too, like for me, when I, because I shoot mills in long range stuff, and if somebody says come up 0.7, that's just seven clicks. Yeah. If they're like 1.7, that's 17 clicks. But if right, somebody says right. come up two and three quarters MOA, I'm like, okay, well, one click is a quarter MOA, so that means there's four clicks per one MOA, so that means right. four times two is <laughs> right. eight, plus three quarters is three, eight plus three is, you know. Yep. And it, it, it then finally I make my adjustments, or I'm making it and I'm looking at the turret the whole time, whereas I can, you know, do that a lot quicker in mills. But that's because I'm also basically an invalid when it comes to math. So right. um, <laughs> anyway, but those windage calculations are interesting. So I this is something, this seems yeah. like maybe some more of our LR2, 3 type stuff. What, yeah. what are, are these like basically equations where you just plug in some values and mills happens to be one of the values and it can spit out something for you? Yeah, right. The one we tend to hinge on the most is the uh, short wind formula. Uh, and that's the one that's geared for uh, milliradian. Uh, but basically, we're looking at the efficiency of whatever cartridge the individual is shooting, looking at all the ballistics. And in our case, we have the Kestrels here. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, we go through, um, we have the gun built, the gun profile built. Uh, and then we go to 500 yards, uh, and then we adjust the wind speed at full value. So it would have to be coming either straight from, uh, if I'm shooting at 12 o'clock, it'd have to be coming straight from my right or straight from my left. Um, so we adjust that until uh, at 500 yards, uh, my windage correction is 0. 0.5. Hmm. And that tends to line everything up uh, in accordance with the short wind formula. Uh, and then, long story short, I can build out my, my wind chart based off of whether I have, uh, we refer to it as uh, miles per hour. So whether I have a four mile per hour gun or a five mile per hour gun or six or seven mile per hour gun sometimes too, uh, I can go in and build a little table uh, that is a quick reference to make uh, wind corrections. Uh, and it's suitable for milliradian. It's designed for milliradian. Uh, but like I said before, there is a conversion and you can easily just uh, convert it for a minute of angle, but that's, you're just adding an d- additional step there. Yeah. So. Hmm. Remember there was one little cheat that I learned that also involves Milleradian and 6.5 Creedmoor. I don't know if you've ever used it, but like weirdly, if you're shooting at a distance and it's an even 100 yard distance, I think it works for like not even uh, 100 yard distance too, but like 300 yards with a 6.5 Creed. Subtract two off of that three 
and you got to dial about one mil. If you're shooting at 400 yards, subtract you, you got to dial about two mils. 500 yards, got to yeah. dial about three mils, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, it's not exact. Yeah. But strangely enough, if all else fails and your ballistics calc poops out on you and stuff like that, it tends to like hit steel for you or yeah. at least get you on steel. Or yeah. Hit. Those rough estimates are sometimes uh, kind of useful. It's funny you mentioned that one, though, because there is actually a wind formula for a minute of angle that's similar to that it's called range minus one hmm. but it's basically taking what you're just talking about right now so if we were shooting at 500 yards uh we would re- literally just take the range uh in hundredths so five minus one uh, and your correction is uh four minutes for a full value 10 mile per hour wind um and that's uh we can kind of change things based off the environment but uh it's okay. the same same concept so a, little, a little cheat for the moa guys perhaps. yeah and and you'll find that too with the minute of angle and the mill there's uh minute of angle obviously they have there's a couple formulas that are optimized for that but the one that i know of a lot of people using and uh, we use it here we tend to uh, teach it here uh, for the mill guys and then we also teach the minute of angle guys other ones um but the the short wind formula is the one that that i personally use mm-hmm. and, and that a lot of the instructors do uh, and we tend to uh, we like it a lot we see good results with it so it's pretty cool yeah it seems like you know we've been talking about some applications and you mentioned you know if you're a recreational shooter or something like that your buddies are shooting one maybe that's all the reason you know because it's it can be kind of a toss-up if you're in competition maybe that's the reason uh, one thing that's for sure here in the states <clears throat> is that MOA remember a lot of people kind of thought MOA was going to kind of go the way of the Dodo when MRAD scopes really started coming on scene and everybody was like, oh, these MRAD scopes are awesome. I'm talking about on the consumer market especially. And uh, they kind of thought, yeah, well, why why even keep MOA? But MOA is still strong. There's still Mm -hmm. probably, I would say, if you look at skew-wise or or, or like literal individual rifle scopes that we sell, we may even still sell more MOA scopes than we sell MRAD scopes here at Vortex. And a lot of that is kind of the traditional American hunter. Yeah. And they tend to go with them away. Do you think, Corey, like there's a reason for that in terms of it's advantageous to the hunter to use MOA over uh, mills? Or do you think that's more rooted in just tradition and, you know, I've been using, I used my dad's scope growing up. It was MOA. I got a scope later on. It was MOA. Now I want to get a new one. Why would I go away from anything right. uh, yeah. that I've already been using? Is- yeah. So I think some of that might be just like what you're talking about. Like, oh, I'm shopping for a new scope. Maybe look at my old one. What does that say on it? Oh, MOA. I'll just, I'll get that unit in a measure. I think that's some of it. Uh, mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, I also think some of it is people tend to associate minute of angle with inches which, sure. uh, you know, kind of thinking about that. And then it can be, and then pretty close. Yeah. Middle radian, um, in meters, when we're shooting in meters, um, that one tenth of a click at a hundred meters is actually one centimeter. Exactly. So as Americans, if you're born and raised here, we tend to think in inches, uh, and it's really hard to associate, uh, what, you know, 10 centimeters looks like <laughs> uh, our brain kind of wants to think about it in 10 inches, not 10 I centimeters. Yeah, I actually have a hard time doing it. Yeah. Um, so I think that might kind of drive people away from that. Um, but I would encourage them to think about those two units like, you know, uh, the common uh, graduations uh, for the turrets typically now, uh, not all of them, but it's a quarter of a, a MOA uh, click. So per click, it's a quarter MOA for the MOA scopes. Uh, and then for the milliradian scopes uh, per click, it's about uh, 0.10. Uh, that's the common values there. Um, but uh, they tend to think about that quarter click on the MOA scopes as a quarter inch. Um, but I would encourage them to, and then the quarter or the tenth click or the one click on the uh, milliradian scope as maybe centimeters. Some people might mm-hmm. start to think about it like that. At 100 yards, mind you. At 100 yards, yes. Um, and it extrapolates. But. but I would just think of the two like this is uh, a quarter, the quarter MOA is a quarter inch at 100 yards. And then the tenth, uh, the one click on the milliradian scope is about a third of an inch at 100 yards. Hmm. So if someone's wanting to really associate things with the inches like they're used to doing, uh, maybe start to think about things uh, in that way if it helps you. But, you know, the quicker we can kind of do away with the inches and just be thinking in the units of measure that our optic works in, uh, the better off we'll be in the long run. Yeah. 
Would you say like some of our optics that I'm thinking of are very, very well suited for hunting and they're just not even available in MRAD? Like in my head, I'm thinking getting the right optic is more important than getting some super duper special unit of measurement that you, you know, like if you see, you're like, and I love this scope, the Viper HS 2.5 to 10x44, only available in MOA with a BDC reticle. Amazing whitetail hunting scope. If I see that and I'm like, oh, but I'm a Mills guy, I can't buy it. I, that, it doesn't seem like a great reason to, to keep from buying the perfect rifle scope, would you say? Yeah, no, not necessarily, not at all. Uh, I do favor Milliradian, but uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, like shooting an MOA is not difficult for me at all. It's very easy for me to do. Mm-hmm. I ju- it's just one of those things you def- definitely have to remember, like, okay, I have a, a minute of angle optic on my gun, and right. depending on what I want to do with that, uh, will depend on how well I need to understand that and then be able to apply corrections if I need to, uh, uh, just depending on my application. Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely not a showstopper if it's it's only manufactured in that one unit, yeah. I would say. And if you're an enthusiast, it can be kind of fun using both. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, the engineers, too. There tend to be a lot of engineers in the long-range classes, and the guys really like numbers, so I think oh, uh, yeah. I think they like to play with numbers like that and... Uh, that's, play with the minute of angle and play with the miller well, that's just and, sick <laughs> yeah that's, that's not yeah. yeah i was getting at something totally different it's more the feel of it you know not necessarily <laughs> the, the nerdy <laughs> mathematics yeah um but how about you mentioned how typically there's uh there's definitely you know what's the word exceptions to this rule Typically, MOA scopes dial in quarter MOA increments. So each click is one quarter MOA or at 100 yards, approximately a quarter of an inch, yada, yada, yada. And typically, MRAD scopes dial in 0.1 MRAD. Now, I've read that one quarter MOA is a finer adjustment than 0.1 MRAD. So, therefore... When I dial with an MOA scope, each one of my clicks is a more finite adjustment. And so, therefore, maybe I'm getting more precise results when I'm using an MOA scope. Do you find that that, in practice, really shows itself a lot? Or is it kind of a moot point? So, I actually have first-hand experience with this, too. And uh, we'll kind of, I can kind of speak to that pretty well. But I think people do tend to associate, like, oh, minute of angle, that's a more precise adjustment in the quarter minute uh, adjustments than the tenth of a mil adjustment. So I want to be more precise. So I want to go with a uh, minute of angle. That's right. kind of the theory there. Um, but I, like I said before, I was trained in mills and I found we actually received an optic that worked in quarter minute adjustments after, you know, all this time working in mills, working in mills, uh, really used to those adjustments. Uh, and then we got the, the quarter minute adjustment optic on our gun and I it was I felt like I was just adjusting for days like it was just click 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 to get where I needed to go oh yeah and uh, I thought that was kind of hindering us to a degree um, and it was uh, a little difficult and I'm, I'm not sure if it's because like I started on mills and now it's I'm, I'm having to do all this extra work uh, or if it was in fact just taking a lot more time and a lot more time to get on target and engage um, but that's what I found. Uh, I found that the third of an inch, like I mentioned before, at 100 yards, uh, that one-tenth of a mil uh, at 100 yards is a third of an inch, roughly. I found that to be a pretty optimal spot to be for, for my adjustments. And, yeah. and if I'm off target, getting back on target is fairly, fairly easy if I'm manipulating the turret. Uh, so for me, uh, that's what I found. But I, I think it depends on the person's application and what they're looking to do with it. Yeah. Well, because like a third minus a quarter, and I'll show my terrible math skills here, but we're talking twelfths yeah. here, right? And so you have to wonder to yourself, can you actually shoot? I mean, shooting sub MOA at 100 yards is a great benchmark. Shooting half MOA at 100 yards, you're starting to look like a pro. Shooting twelfth inch at 100 yards like to, to, to that point if we're talking the difference between the two of them right. like can you really tell i mean maybe when we really start to extend it way the heck out there you know right. a, a 12 starts to open up and become a lot bigger as you go further away but even still i mean within the confines of normal engagement distances it's still pretty small 
And it's, you know, just for uh, context, too, you, we're thinking, you know, on the milliradian optic, I'm doing one one tenth of a mil click in whatever direction. That's going to equal roughly two and a half inches at 700 yards. Mm. And if I do that same uh, click on a quarter minute adjustment, a uh, minute of angle optic, that's about two inches, a little under, I think it is. So it's like two, two and a half at <laughs> 700. Like, can you shoot that good? I, th- that's pretty good. If you can do that, that's awesome. But uh, I right. have a tough time <laughs> with that. <laughs> so that's uh, that's really kind of drilling down into it and getting really refined. Um, yeah. So Well, and that's, of course, too, assuming that you're shooting in a vacuum. Right. You know? Because if you're shooting on any range that I've ever shot on, 700-yard shot, you shoot it, you run the bolt. By the time you're already back on the gun and ready to shoot the second shot, I've had times where the wind is totally shifted or there's something different going on. Right. And now the second shot, even if you do it, like a robot the exact same way the second time there could be something different that's about a 12th of an moa difference just from environmentals right um now yeah and that uh that's a good point too is because in especially in in the pipeline the long range pipeline we do here uh, we're worried about so many other variables uh and uh, very rarely uh, actually not ever is the optic whether it's in minute of angle or milliradian Uh, really holding the student back. It's usually, you know, external variables such as the wind we're worried about. Uh, Did you range your target properly? Things like that. Uh, Like there's Mm. so many other things that we have to worry about uh, aside from that, that it's not even noticeable to this, to them themselves. It's not going to be an issue. Right. Um, So just to keep that in mind. Right. Is there anything we've kind of, I want to, well, maybe you have other stuff at the top of your head, but I I feel like I want to address because We've talked about MOA versus MRAD before here at Vortex in various capacities. And I know sometimes there's people who are, are really, they're really into the very specific details about it. You know, they can get maybe even a little uh, perturbed, for lack of a better term, when they're like, well, you guys aren't talking about, you're not bringing pi into the equation and talking about how it all, you know, works and on an arc and all this stuff. Um and we're not getting into that, and so if that's what you were looking for, I apologize, but it also sounds like that's something that you're already aware of, in which case, I'm glad that you already know that. Uh, but for beginners, I feel like this is the kind of stuff that you really need to, to know. You need to kind of know the the practical differences between them, not the theoretical or the or the whatever, the factual, the scientific differences between them. Uh, it's the practical differences, I feel, that really make... Uh, hopefully the buying decision for you or, or whatever it is, the, the using of that type of rifle scope a little bit easier for you. So that's that's kind of what we're getting into. But uh, can you think of anything else that's really worth knowing for somebody out there? Uh, I would just kind of point out uh, some of the usefulnesses of our technical reticles that we have in our modern day optics now because mm-hmm. uh, we tend to have you know all those numbers and hash marks and things in there. I would say that those come in both milliradian and minute of angle, and we can use those for ranging targets. Uh, we just have to use different numbers if we're in mils and use different numbers if we're in minute of angle. Uh, but we can actually, if we know the target size, range that target just using uh, our reticle and some simple math formula. Uh, and then the reverse can also be done if we have a laser range finder, we can laser that target. Uh, and then we can do the reverse math behind that and figure out the size of that target. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe if we wanted to measure a rack of antlers or something on an animal uh, or something along those lines. Uh, and then uh, just using talk-ons, I was kind of talking about uh, getting the same units as your friends. So if I'm hunting with somebody and I want to try to talk them on a specific area, uh, if we both have, um, if we're both shooting in mills, uh, that'd be easy enough for us to just put our reticles up on a known point. And then I can talk them on using the um, technical reticle onto a certain area to yeah. point something out to them. Um, so I would just say, uh, you know, that like both uh, all all the things that we do with technical reticles can be done with either minute of angle or milliradian. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. And technical reticle, if you're not super familiar with what Corey's talking about, you've actually probably seen something like it before in a picture or in a show or something like that. And that's basically any kind of a reticle that gives you more information than just the old classic duplex crosshair. And even I'd say it goes beyond what we call a BDC reticle, which has some form of hash marks in the lower line going down that relate to some general holdovers, usually for hunting rifles. These are reticles that are like a ruler in a lot of ways. So they'll have hash marks, and they might even have dots on them, and they're all spaced together or spaced apart in very specific either MOA 
or ML or MRAD distances, and uh, and and that way you can use it like a ruler or a grid over the scene or the or the target that you're shooting to give you some more information. They 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 can be simple or they can be really complex. I don't necessarily think that the more complex they are, the better they are in all cases. But right, yeah, yeah. Um, boy. Oh, I also want to point out, boy, thank God we are in the age, though, where the reticles measurement style matches the turrets. <laughs> yeah, style. That's, that's, I ran into that uh, recently, actually. Did so, you? Yeah. Wait, did it come into a class? They're still, yeah, they're still floating around out there. They so, do. Yeah, yeah, that was a big thing. It was the yeah. mill dot system yep. and MOA turrets. Yep, MOA turrets with a mill dot reticle. Oh, so, my gosh. Yeah, those those are still floating around out there. Um, so just be aware, um, you m- maybe, maybe not have one of those. Um, we even sold one. I mean, it, admit we, yeah, we did that. We are responsible for some of the ones still floating <laughs> around out there. It's the Viper six and a half to twenty PA, I believe, parallax adjustment had it on the side. It's a pretty sweet scope, but we had it had MOA turrets, and there was one that had a reticle in it that was a mill dot reticle. And yeah, um, the mill dot reticle really is. I don't want to poo hoo it. It was used by very many people in in the military, or armed forces, and all that. Uh, but it's fairly outdated now. Mm-hmm. It's it had its place, it had its function, but the modern day technical reticles really are. They do everything that it did and more, so much more that that's that's really kind of the way to go. Right. Yep. And I I was trained on the mill mill dot duplex reticle, and like going to what we have now, I feel spoiled like with it. <laughs> and it's really it takes out a lot of like the the long long hand math and stuff that we used to have to do. Simple stuff, but it was just time consuming. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, thank God we're in uh, this point in time. Right. Right. Um, well, there you have it, folks. That's MOA versus MRAD from hopefully a very practical and, again, hopefully understandable format. If you have any questions about this, certainly let us know. We're always happy to help out with that sort of thing in the comments if you're watching on YouTube or over on our Instagram page. If it's something you'd like us to dive into further or anything like that, let us know. Maybe we can have Corey back on or or his sniper cohort, Justin, <laughs> um, and all that good stuff. But, yeah. Otherwise, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye. Bye, everyone. That's a wrap, everybody. Hope you liked this topic. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and, of course, subscribe right here because there's going to be plenty more to come. If there's topics you'd like to hear us go over on the Vortex Edge podcast in the future, you can let us know by commenting below or hitting us up on Instagram, which is at Vortex Edge. We'd love to hear your suggestions so we can be bringing you the kind of episodes and topics that you want to hear. Otherwise, we'll be seeing you on a future episode. Thanks again for watching, everybody. Bye.